Good day, viewers. Welcome back to The Preaching Humanist with David Oliverio. That is I. Let's discuss vision and passion in the secular humanist movement. Way back in the day, I used to preach from the Bible, and I would quote from an Old Testament scripture. Without a vision, people perish. Without passion, we perish. So my question and my challenge to the secular humanist worldview, the atheist worldview, the non-believers. Do we have vision? Do we have goals? Objectives? Do we have passion? We must, as a movement, be prepared for more individuals who long for relationships with like-minded people. Once we are vaccinated, once we return to somewhat of normalcy in our lives, hopefully this year, in 2021, we must prepare ourselves for people that long for relationships. We must be prepared to accommodate them to our communities. Zoom is okay. FaceTime serves its purpose for now, but it's not the same. It's not the same. Now, many churches have this vision. Many churches have the passion. And they are currently in preparation to help and to reach others in two major ways. Now, I know this because I talked to them. I was out yesterday. If you go to the Preaching Humanist Facebook page, you'll see the videos I post and the pictures of evangelical Christian groups during the pandemic with a large concert in urban Austin. Hundreds of them. You can see the videos I took. I talked to a couple of them. They're out there. They have passion. They have vision. They want to make the world better. Some want to control, but many are good people, but they have passion and vision. We know that their belief system doesn't work. We have something better. My question is, do we? Do we have the same passion and vision they do? Now, there are two major ways that churches use for their passion. Number one, growth and building. In the midst of the pandemic, here it is January of 2021. I have a couple of churches right down the street. And yeah, I walked right into a mega church a few weeks ago in the lobby during the week with my mask. I was approached by two of the associate pastors. I made sure they stayed away. And I asked them, please put your masks on because they didn't have them on. I stayed back away. We had a nice little talk. I asked them, are you all experiencing growth and are you preparing for an influx of people? Yes, they're building on. They have additional building projects in this mega church. During hardships, during pandemics, during moments of insecurities and survival for many people, during pandemics, during world wars, Many people return or turn to mythological concepts for comfort, for security. Christians know this. They're preparing. They have vision. They have passion to meet the needs of people and to reach them and to grow and to share what they believe. Do we? Another way they promote and something else they do is helping and meeting the needs of their local communities. There's another little church right down the street I call the Hippie Church, a progressive liberal church, unlike the big mega church I went into that is more evangelical. Every Monday 
every week, Monday through Friday, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. They set up tables outside this church. They meet the needs of the community. They have clothing and food for people in need. They have signs up. We love you. God loves you. Jesus is love. Homeless people. People that have lost their jobs because of the pandemic. They're doing it. They have vision and passion to help humanity to share and to grow. I talked to the director, kept my distance. He was a progressive Christian. He didn't have an issue with me being an atheist. We talked. He said, dude, I don't care if you're an atheist as long as you're good and you help people and we find common ground. That's my kind of guy. But they're out there. Do we have anything similar to that? Sure, we have the great organizations of Foundation Beyond Belief, they're wonderful, and other non-belief organizations that give and help others. But they're not near as visible. We don't have the groups, the numbers, the power, the money, the resources. They do. Do we have that? There's a walking trail that Christine and I walk around, one of our various hiking trails in this part of Austin. It takes us around the shopping center, the neighborhood, beautiful area. And we do several loops and there's a large Lutheran church. And I observe them. I go to people's websites. I investigate. I talk to these people. They have vision. They have passion. We walked by a few Sunday mornings ago. Sorry. Yeah, Sunday morning. And I noticed they had a group outside meeting on one of our mild days here in Austin. We have some cold weather, not too much in the winter. Usually it's pretty nice. And it was an outdoor Sunday school class. They were all wearing their masks. They were seated apart. And they had one of the ministers up there. They had food, coffee, entertainment, all outside. Passion and vision. And more importantly, they, every Monday morning, put up signs. It's on their website. They put it on social media. Marketing and advertisements. Come here. Why? We have a drive through food pantry for those in the neighborhoods around the church. If you have lost your job, if you're having a hard time buying clothing and food for your family because of the pandemic, anybody in need, it doesn't matter if they're believers or unbelievers, their sign said, come here, drive through, they're doing it safe. They have passion and vision. I walked by, it was a Monday morning on my own. Christine was teaching. She's a teacher. And I stopped and looked, and I saw the sign. Come, we will help you. We love you. Of course, God loves you. They had, there were lines of cars, like a fast food restaurant, to go up to the church. They handed them a bag. It looked like food. Tons of food. And another bag of clothing. Do we have anything that resembles that? Do we have the same vision that they have? Now, of course, they're driven by pleasing a God. I understand that. Of course, they have the desire to go to heaven. That gives them motivation. But we in the non-believing world, we have reason. We have hope in making the world better through human hands, through reason, through science and education. We must somehow attempt to build something that resembles what churches do. Because that system 
without the supernatural can be very effective to reach other people and help others. Now, my question is, can we compete? Do we need to compete? Now, I would challenge, this is challenging for me and all those secular communities around the world, around the country. Are we going to accept that we are mainly little secular social clubs? Which is good. We need that, that camaraderie, that like-mindedness with other individuals, that identity, that feeling, because we're all human, just like church people do. But can we take it a step further? They have vision. Do we have a vision? What is our vision? Is it to only debate and argue and try to change minds? Many people do that in our worldview. I really don't do that too much anymore. Not that that is wrong. I think we can build rather than just tear down. I think we can do it, but we must have passion. We must have a vision. Otherwise, without it, we're going to dwindle. And what will remain are small, isolated, secular groups of people that just want to find friends, which is good, or murmur, complain, and criticize. This is my vision and passion to promote something that is so superior, like my sign says, to theistic religion. Let's find a way to get this vision and this passion and go to the next level, rather than just fighting and arguing whether there is an invisible spirit in the sky. Go to my Facebook page and see the videos and posts I took the other day talking to evangelical Christians at Lady Bird Lake in Austin. You will see passion and vision. I only hope that we can have that same vision and passion to make the world better without the supernatural. Well, thank you for watching The Preaching Humanist. Remember to let the light, the compassion, the vision, and the passion of secular humanism shine. Have a wonderful day.